Hi folks, Steve here. I'm really excited about this one. This is how I built the Wicker Man, so let's crack on. Come. It is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. I began with a base of 5mm foam core and glued a couple of blocks of SPS foam on top. The Wicker Man in the film is sat on top quite a large hill that's overlooking the island and although it would be impractical to build something like that I still wanted my version of the Wicker Man to have that bit of elevation to it and the XPS would allow me to do that uh, because I can cut and shape it with a sharp knife which is what I'm doing here. The structure of the Wicker Man is mainly built from sticks. Um, these are branches that I cut from a small shrub in my garden. I washed them and then allowed them to dry in a warm place for about 24 hours. And I tested various layouts and combinations of the sticks until I was happy, um, trying to keep the scale in mind as I worked on this. Because I'd already made a headpiece when I was planning out the build and I wanted to make sure that the, the scale was kept to an effing that was in proportion. Um, so the initial sticks for the legs um, were hot glued onto the XPS foam and uh, I'd cut small gouges in as well with a sharp blade which allowed me to just get uh, set them in a little bit to, to make it more sturdy. Once the first pieces were securely attached I continued to build the legs adding further sticks just test fitting them, uh, trimming down any excess and then gluing them in place when I was happy with how they fitted. I would also swap between using hot glue and super glue to keep the, the sticks together as I built the legs. The hot glue is really good for attaching the sticks to the foam without melting the foam which the super glue would do, but the super glue is good for achieving a, a quick bond with the, to keep the sticks together because otherwise the, the hot glue takes a while to set and sometimes you can find that they move out of place or you just end up having to hold them until it completely dries uh, and you also burn your fingers a lot as well if you're not careful. In the same way as I built the head previously, the body was based off a block of regular polystyrene that I could then attach the sticks around and add a bit of texture to. Um, this would save me on using up all my sticks as a, as a bundle to build the body and it also kept the overall weight of the build down as well. To fill the gaps on the body, I used my old favourite material, coconut fibre. If you don't know about this, you can buy it in pretty big blocks from pet shops and you can usually find it in the reptile section. And what I do is I get a cheese grater and uh, I break it down and then I keep the ground up fibre in a plastic tub until I need it. Coconut fibre really is one of the greatest things that I've ever discovered for, for model making. Uh, it's great for using on bases for giving texture and things like that and I also use it in a lot of kit bashes. It's good for putting over joints and all kinds of stuff like that. It's really versatile stuff. As I was working on the body I knew I wanted to have the heads and arms of some helpless and unwilling human sacrifices poking out. So for these I used some leftover bits from uh, Fireforge Games Living Dead Peasants kit uh, which is a really fun kit. I uh, chose a few arms and a male and a female head and I glued them in place on the body so that it looks like they're trying to reach out from inside the wicker man. Lovely. At the same time as finishing the body I also added the branches for the arms to make sure that they looked integrated rather than just stuck onto the body. And I also used some cotton bandages to hide joints and to add a bit of strength at these points as well such as the shoulders and it also creates some nice areas for adding further bits of texture and vegetation later. To do that I cut and stretched out pieces of the bandage and I fixed them in place by soaking them in some PVA glue and then applying them on the model. And the head was attached with super glue. I then gave the model a coat of PVA based sealant and PVA plus black paint for the base. Now I began adding more detail and texture I was using combinations of coconut fibre, static grass, bits of reindeer moss, things like that. I applied it in multiple layers to build it up. Um, same was done for the base as well, and to which you'll notice I also added some balsa wood stakes and I was going to use them later on to attach some chains that would then wrap around the model. 
I went back and forth with this until I was happy. I would uh, let the first lot of glue dry, go back in, put some more super glue on, add more coconut fibre, more static grass, whatever it was. Um, just really went to town and built it up so it looked nice and grungy. And here's a bit of a close up for you, so you can see how it's looking at this stage with all the textures and the pull up fellas trying to escape. Now I added the chains to the model. Uh, this is sold as jeweler's chain, you can buy it online in various places. And all I did here was I uh, wrapped it around and um, once I was happy with where it was positioned I set it in place with super glue. Um, I also run a small bead of super glue all the way down the chain so that it soaks into where the links are and it solidifies and this, this keeps the chain solid so it makes it a lot easier to paint and it's not sort of rattling around loose or anything like that. I set the model up for painting with a black primer followed by white for a Zenithal Prime. This picks out all the detail and it's a great way to start any model. For the main colours I used a variety of browns starting with a dark brown which also had some dark green and blue mixed in to act as the shade tones. I gradually built up to lighter browns and focused more on the upper and exposed areas as I did this, working my way up the model. Once happy with the base colours, I then used Army Painter Necrotic Flesh, which is a very light creamy green, to colour the areas that had bandages, moss, uh, concentrations of additional texture, bits like that. Here you can see I've just taken a dark grey and I'm just cutting in the little rocks uh, things like that that are on the base, just getting them filled in. Next it's time for oil washes. I've got two washes on my palette, one's burnt umber and the other is black and I wash the whole model including the base. Uh, the only parts that I don't is the green foliage. I'll leave that for later. Um, I move between the brown and the black washes as I'm going across the model. I uh, focus on the brown on the top on the raised parts of the of the model and the black in areas that have been naturally shaded. Um, the two washes blend really easily on the model as well so there's no need to be worried about them mixing with each other when you're painting. Once the oil wash is fully applied and has had a few minutes to settle, I go around the model with a makeup sponge, removing any excess wash carefully, uh, then leave the model to dry completely. Using Vallejo Dark Flesh on a large makeup brush, I give all the wood a gentle dry brush. This helps pick out the details again. I save this stage until after the oil wash, as the layer of oil paint actually blends slightly with the dry brush, and I think it gives a much smoother transition. I also go in after this with a smaller brush and do a more careful focused dry brush in certain areas too. The next step is to add some more colour to the foliage. To do this I used inks, I used some raw sienna, some green and some yellow. And I used a small lid as a palette to put the inks on as I'll be going back and forth with my brush into the inks, and applying them and allowing them to mix on the model to get interesting tones and variation. There's no right or wrong way to do this and even any overspill onto the wood is absolutely fine as it adds some nice natural looking variation to the wood itself. Turning to the base, I glued on some pieces of clump foliage uh, that I will darken down later with some inks and washes. And then I mixed a paste of PVA glue and some grass flock and I applied this with a paintbrush and if this is a, a really nice way of adding flock as it forms nice little mossy clumps and it looks quite natural and once the glue is dried you can't see any of that, it just leaves the, leaves the clumps of flock behind.
Next I turned my attention to the chains. I base coated them in a mix of Vallejo Modeler Rust and Green Stuff World to Light Rust. This will give a really nice rusty base colour that I can then wash with some more black oil wash and then I'll highlight with a silver metallic colour. Here I'm painting the arms and heads on the body of the Wicker Man. Uh, just some basic flesh tones, quite thinned down so they're almost at glaze consistency. And I'm allowing the previous layers of paint and the washes that I've already put on to do a lot of the work for me here. Um, just going in with a fine brush and um, just use lots of little brush strokes, uh, little dots and dashes uh, to put the paint on. Uh, mainly focusing on building up the highlights rather than painting the entirety. Um, I will do a video at one point about how I paint skin and faces. Uh, this is really just a very, very quick way of doing it just to get the get the effect that I'm looking for. So now it's really just some finishing touches. Um, I added some small flower clumps at various points uh, across the greenery and that was just to add a bit more colour and a bit of visual interest. I used some, some yellow and white flowers just so they would stand out nicely. And I also put some grass clumps on the base as well just to give that a little bit more foliage. Once that was done the last step was to attach his face. Um, I um, had the face for a while and um, thought it would fit quite nicely and add this kind of uh, pagan feel to it. Um, it's actually the face from GW's Statue of Sigma, which is I think from the Warcry terrain set. Um, I just painted it up with uh, a quick stone effect, so it was a dark grey paint, a black wash and then um, a flesh coloured dry brush just to highlight it. And um, yeah, it looked absolutely fine. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. The Wicker Man is one of my absolute favourite films and I've been wanting to do a build around the idea of a Wicker Man for quite a while now. Um, I was really just waiting for, for the inspiration to hit me to, uh, as to how I wanted to go about it. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video and seeing it come to life. Um, hopefully you like the final result. Uh, if you do then please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to my channel as that really does help out. And that's all, so bye for now.